because our communities deserve dignity and respect and nobody gets left behind. We're creating a movement that's large enough and has hands big enough to fit everybody. Nobody gets left behind. Not one more. Not power one more. to the people. I say it. No, I want y'all to, to remember Mike Brown was your mother, your father, your brother, your sister. It could have been your uncle. Join this movement and don't get complacent. Consistency is key. Follow Shut It Down, ATL. There's organizations who are organizing. And it's bigger than you, it's organizing. Southerners on New Ground is organizing. Malcolm X Grassroots Movement is organizing. The Gen Y Project is organizing. Solutions Not Punishment is organizing. And the list goes on. But if you want to get down, follow us. Hashtag shut it down ATL. The movement continues. We not done. It just started. It just begun. Just right. started. Yes. Revolution is now. The revolution is now. They did most of the work. You want to leave? Can you point one out? Why? Uh, I'm here. I'm, I'm here. I'm participating. I'm not a leader. Why are you here? Um, Mary, I have We're here today because we actually wanted to do our due diligence to hear what the leaders that organized this event wanted us to hear. We actually wanted to lean in and be gracious to the information that they put out. And the moment that someone dropped the mic and began to get on the mic, the politics of respectability came into place. People began to talk about what it is that young black folks could do, began to question how we mother and parent our children in terms of are we moral enough, are we doing enough? And people began to talk about how much we should keep peace, how much we should keep peace when our babies are dying on the street. Young brother laid on the ground for four and a half hours. His mother couldn't even hug him or, or cover him up and they expect people to be peaceful. We live in Atlanta and we see this happen all the time the hyper-policing, the criminalization of young people. There are laws and policies on the books telling young people to lift their pants up. Are you kidding me? Is that, is that what we're going to talk about? When young people are dying, when cops can kill people in, in a split second and go home and eat dinner and there's no problem? That's an issue for us. And so when they to tell us to be peaceful in such a time as this, it's unfathomable. What it means is we must resist harder because those who are in power and those who have the power to actually change and do things that makes our community safe and have dignity choose not to do that. They leave it in the hands of people who don't have any interest in us. They don't care about those who are being marginalized. They don't care about the working class. They don't care about those who are undocumented, queer, trans. They don't care about us. And so that's why it's important. They may have power in terms of the seats that they sit, the titles that they have, and the money in their pocket. But we have people power, and we know that it's because of the people power that is what has made critical right. changes in our society. And, and every people may want to co opt and say that they woke up. Kasim Reed may want to say, I woke up and I'm just going to put video surveillances on cops and put them on the pails. It's people been busting their behinds, showing up to meetings saying, Y'all need to do this. And while he's talking about that, let's question where is that money going to come from? Because in Atlanta, before this conversation, they were going to continue to punish those working class folks and raise the price of tickets. We should look at the courts and look at traffic court. You should look at the court systems here in Atlanta filled with black folks getting caught up, getting traffic tickets that they can't afford, then being put on probation. I mean, they continuously want to monitor and surveil us for so many reasons we're out here. I'm out here because my baby girl is in my house and when she sees blue light, she's afraid of the police. I'm out here tonight because on April 15th, the cops decided that it was not my responsibility to tell somebody of their democratic right not to allow their vehicle to be searched, not for them, that they didn't have to speak to the police, and I was arrested on charges of disorderly conduct, on charges of obstruction of justice, and ended up with a fractured elbow because I decided to stand up for somebody and stand up for black folks who were being pulled out of their cars when, when it all said and done, they were being criminalized. They were actually the victims. She had her brother in the car with her who needed to go to the emergency room. That's how twisted our system is. And so you can ask anybody out here, I bet you they know somebody who's been assaulted, harassed, experienced post-police violence, 
on one shape, form, or another. It's not just about cops punching people in the face. It's about the sexual remarks and gestures that they said to our sister when she got locked up the other day after doing a peaceful protest. We have been raped. We have been maimed. We have been talked about. So many things. So many things. And why aren't we out here? That shouldn't be the question. The thing is, why is it that we consistently have to do this? I should be at home putting my baby girl to bed and be able to do that in peace. And should be able to do that in peace. I don't think nothing about what Holder said because Holder should actually still be in D.C. filing papers to indict Darren Wilson. He actually doesn't have, what does he come to tell us? And, they, and people like to pretend as though the police has been good and then they got bad. That trust has just been broken. Let's not forget the history of police. They started as patty rollers. They started as patty rollers. The folks who went looking for free slaves and that's what they continue to do. The oppressed people. The marginalized people, those who won't conform, that's who the police come for. So they're doing what they were meant to do. And so us trying to build trust actually is not the conversation. It's actually how do you build systems and how do you build support? When cops kill us on the street, you do something about it. So you can come to Atlanta and talk all day about what we need to build, but go back to D.C. and do your fucking job. Do your fucking job. That's what we're saying. Actually make some changes. Actually, before you leave, stop criminalizing people for low uh, marijuana charges and when you have billion dollar companies that now in different states can actually get paid off of it and you got brothers sitting in prison for, uh, for years and also on some, on some mar marijuana charges that's like that needs to stop that needs to stop there are things that need to be done that he has the pen stroke to do it and so I appreciate his ride here I appreciate he's been in meetings all day but we have been grinding for weeks now and the people have been in the streets now and for generations we have been on this hustle to get liberation so he might be tired but we're tired of being tired we're sick and tired of being sick and tired and so we want him if he wants to gloat about being the first U.S. attorney, that's amazing. But if you don't do nothing about it, being the first black one, what does that mean? Because we don't feel it on the streets. We don't feel it right now. We don't feel it right now. Nothing that he's done has actually taken the boot off of our necks. And so when he does something that actually makes concrete changes in our lives, when we wake up the next day, we don't have to worry about no not raids, baby's faces being blown off by the police. Make that difference. Change that shit up. The names of Amadou Diallo, Patrick Dorisman, Oscar Grant, Kamari Griffin, Kendrick McDade, Timothy Russell, Urban Jefferson, Timothy Stansberry, Sean Bell, Orlando Barlow. Usman Zongo, Aaron Campbell.